Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. Um, first of all, as usual announcements, we're still doing the Stop Talking, Start Doing campaign, which is such a beautiful thing, not only as it pertains to improving your diet and lifestyle habits, but really it's about acting on things that you've been talking about doing for a long time and just saying, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to just talk about it. And next year in 2021, I'm not going to say, my gosh, this year will be the year because you might've been saying that for a long time about a lot of things. I know I have been saying that for a long time about a lot of things. I've got the diet and lifestyle thing down pat, but there's a lot of other stuff in my life I've meant to be doing and I'm starting to do now. And it's really, really fun. So stop talking, start doing, uh, you can get a pledge card from us. We'll pay you to learn. You become a member. We're going to give you credits that you can use towards some of our amazing educational courses. No other company gives as much away for free as we do. So if you're interested in that, pampopper at msm.com. Uh, new courses this year, 10 new courses in all. The first one up, because it's so important, is the vaccines course. And with this, we're going to create a platform online with not just the lectures from the course itself, but with resources for you, things that you can give to um, family members and teachers and, um, and legislators and that sort of thing. I mean, this is a, an, an issue that just makes people apoplectic and the only way to calm things down is to just insist on making it all about factual information. And so we're going to try to help you by providing information and we'll also post updates on that platform as well. Um, one last thing before we get into today's topic, which is somewhat related to the stop talking, start doing thing. Um, I got an email and from, from several people actually, and it came up today in our conversations with Pam, you know, how do you get people to do this? What do you do when your family and your friends are eating a terrible diet and they're, they're sick and all that sort of thing? How do you talk them into it? And the, the thing is you can't, you just can't. And so I thought about this a lot based on my own history. I've been at this for 25 years. And there was a point in time when I was trying to convince people to do certain things, including even some of our members. And then I realized this thing about convincing. When you're trying to convince somebody, the first thing is that you're essentially, you don't really say it this way, but what you're essentially saying is, I know better than you what's good for you. I want you to do this. The second thing is it sometimes becomes all about winning. And, um, and, and the person can often become defensive if you bring something up that they have not indicated an interest in talking about. And, um, and I, I teach by analogy and just, you know, just think about it. If you saw a friend of yours enroll their child in a, in a school that you don't think is a very good one, I don't think that you would say, listen, you put your kid in the wrong school. My kid's in a better school. Let me show you how to make the transition to a different school. I mean, people just don't like to be told what to do. So I think what we really want to be doing is we want to have dialogue with people when we're invited to, and that's the important thing, when we're invited to. It's not our job to show up every place we go where there are other humans and show them the error of their ways and how much better they would be, how much better off they would be if they just did things our way. When you have dialogue, what you're really doing is having conversation that leads to common ground and um, and often some agreement on some things. But I think it becomes pretty contentious when you're in the convincing business because people tend to get defensive. So don't convince, instead influence. Influence is a much better thing. And the best way you can influence other people is to practice healthy habits, look like a healthy person, um, and model good behavior in front of the people who you would like to do things differently. And that form of influence is much, power, much more powerful over the long haul than trying to talk people into doing things because you really need for them to see the light. I did a lot of that in the beginning, and I've said this before, there are still a few people when they see me in the shopping mall, duck into the jewelry store to try to avoid eye contact because they're afraid I'm going to come running across the shopping mall to try to give them a lecture about something. And um, that's an unfortunate thing that I've had to overcome here at that early time when I was just way too enthusiastic and a little bit overbearing. So with that in mind, I'm going to come back to stop talking, start doing, which is our mantra. And it is resonating with you guys. We've had a boatload of pledges come in and new members who are saying, I'm doing it. People who are saying, oh, this, year, this is the year I'm going to have a career change. I'm going to make that happen. So this is really good. Now, I want to maintain the enthusiasm, but I have to point out one little negative thing. I'm sure you guys know this. 
The statistics are pretty dismal for people who make commitments to change things, not just diet and lifestyle habits, all kinds of other things too, and who actually follows through and accomplishes a significant change in the long term. There are lots of reasons to this, uh, for this whole thing, but, but according to a best-selling book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, changing your focus just a bit and, and restructuring how you think about everything might increase your chances of success. And this book is really, really good. I highly recommend it. I might do an advanced study course on it because I think he has a lot of great ideas. So he says in his book, and we're all familiar with this, most people, particularly at the beginning of the year, set goals for health improvement and other areas of personal development. According to Mr. Clear, if you have a myopic focus on these goals, it might actually prevent you from achieving them. Instead, he suggests that you set goals in order to get yourself headed in the right direction and then immediately pay more attention to habit change than goals. He says that constantly reviewing goals which haven't yet been achieved results in feeling like a failure, while a good habit results in success every time you practice it and repeat it. Additionally, goals have a finite endpoint when you achieve them, whereas habits you can continue to build on and make even better over a period of time. And I've been at this 25 years, 27 years since I changed my diet and lifestyle habits, and I'm, I'm much different today about a little bit than I was back 20 some years ago. Habits can take a long time to change. Most people slip up sometimes, many times actually, and revert back to old behaviors at least a few times. Additionally, the positive effect of habit change can take an awful long time sometimes to become noticeable. So people beat themselves up with self-criticism over their mistakes and often feel like failures. Because of this, Clear recommends using rewards to increase the likelihood of, of practicing good habits and again, staying focused on the habits and not paying so much attention to the goal. Am I thin yet? You know, asking yourself that every day really doesn't help. Now I do this and it works and I'll give you an example. I'm a runner, as some of you know, and um, I don't like it when it's cold. I tell everybody when the wind chill reaches 68 degrees, I have to go inside and I run on a treadmill from mid to late fall till late spring. It really needs to be 70 some degrees before I'm comfortable outside. I used to hate treadmill running. And then one of the things that I did to make it more fun is I started watching series on Netflix and um, Amazon Prime. And uh, a lot of it's just real brain candy. I'm not watching documentaries and you know, I'm not trying to educate myself. I'm watching Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder and Bosch and you know, Goliath and, and uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. If you want a list, I'll post it on my blog and you'll know everything that I'm watching. Um, but it's a treat for me. I don't let myself watch this stuff any other time, just the treadmill. And so what's happened is I look forward to doing something now that I used to really not like at all. So there are lots of ways to make yourself enjoy something you'd rather not do, a little bit of brainstorming, and you can come up with something that would motivate you to do it more often and feel better about it. Shifting the way that you view yourself is another suggestion that Claire makes in his book. People tend to make decisions and take actions, at least in part, based on how they perceive themselves. Look at the behaviors you're trying to adopt and see yourself as the kind of person who engages in those behaviors. So for example, if you're trying to adopt healthy eating habits, picture yourself as a healthy eater. Picture yourself making good choices in the grocery store, ordering differently in restaurants and at gatherings. How do you feel if you picture yourself that way? You probably think, gosh, I would feel really good about myself if I did those things. If you're trying to form the habit of being on time, picture yourself as someone who's in control of your time. See yourself maintaining an appointment book, starting each day with a plan and being really relaxed as you show up on time or even early for meetings and other commitments. How does it feel when you close your eyes and think about being a person who manages his or her life really well? Most people who visualize themselves engaging in health promoting activities feel really good about themselves when they do it. So if you follow through and actually do these things regularly, you'll get to have those good feelings several times a day. This in turn will make you wanna practice healthy habits and good habits more often. So instead of the downward cycle where goals aren't met, new habits seem to be really hard to form, and self-criticism is just a regular thing that you engage in, you find yourself in a different and more positive cycle in which change actually does occur over time. Last but not least, Claire talks about something that my mother and grandmother told me often during my adolescent years. You are a product of the company you keep. Now I used to roll my eyes. My parents and grandparents had a lot of things to say like that. And, 
But you know, it's amazing. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Some of the things that I was told as a kid, I really did remember. If you hang around a lot with people who eat garbage and you don't exercise, they don't pay attention to their health or they have a negative view of life, this kind of thing rubs off on you. And conversely, if you spend time with people who are more like the person you visualize yourself becoming, it'll make you more likely to succeed. To this point, one time a mentor told me that if you want to play tennis, what you should do is find somebody who's a lot better tennis player than you and play with that person because you will become a better player much more quickly playing with somebody better than you. And I think this is true. Spending time with people who are in alignment with the direction that I've been taking my life and, and, and people who've succeeded at things that I aspire to do, it's made the journey easier and it's motivated me to want to do better and be better. The bottom line of all of this is set goals but focus on habits. Find a way to pair your habits with rewards which will make you look forward to doing the right things. And I'm still astounded every time I think about it. I like being on the treadmill. I never thought those words would come out of my mouth. Use visualization to change your opinion and your image of yourself and find people of like mind who want some of the same things that you do to hang out with. Their positive influence really will rub off on you. All right, that's all for today as usual. Hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber yet and pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.